It's been long awaited, taken four years. The CAS review published today by Dr Hilary Cass has found that remarkably weak evidence and toxic debate around gender ideology has badly let down children. That's right. She says that the toxicity of the debate around gender meant that professionals were afraid to openly discuss their views. And she also says there's no good evidence to support the global clinical practice of prescribing hormones to under-18s to halt puberty or transition to the opposite sex. Well, here to discuss the findings are Joanne Lockwood, the founder of See Change Happen, and Lucy Marsh from the Family Education Trust. Um, Lucy, if we can start uh, with you, what do you take from this report? And is it about time that we heard, heard some of these things? Yes, overall, we, we largely welcome the report and it, it's it's really good to see it out there, the fact that there isn't the evidence base to support uh, the transition of children and that puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones are harmful. It's also really good to see that there's this the acknowledgement of this pipeline from social transitioning to school through to the fact that these children go on to puberty blockers and the fact that they're harmful. Um, mm. However, we would say that uh, we don't think that any child should be socially transitioned. Just say that again. So you don't think any child should be socially transitioned? No, I don't think any child should be socially transitioned because, because as, as is evidenced in the cash review, the, this uh, social transition in general leads to children going down a medical pathway and, and there isn't any evidence that it's beneficial. And that, mm. However, there is evidence that it's harmful. So the report does say that... Just, sorry. just to be clear, so when you say socially transitioned, you mean everybody around that child, teachers, parents, other children, considering them to be of the opposite gender to which they were born? Yes, well, it basically, it's lying to children because nobody can change sex. It isn't possible. OK, Lucy, if you would just respond to that, please. Oh, well, sorry, Joanne. That... Sorry, Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> yes, good morning. Uh, good morning, Lucy. Good morning, everybody else. Uh, yeah, I welcome the cast report as well. There's a number of things in there that I, I take, uh, not pleasure in, but, yeah, solace in that... Uh, CAS report has identified that the services provided to young people, children, via the NHS, by the gender services, is woefully inadequate. And I completely agree. The support for transgender people at whatever age has been woefully inadequate for many, many years now. So looking at what uh, some of the key things that come out of this is Dr. CAS is recommending a broad, holistic assessment by a multi-professional team. I welcome that. We need to have better analysis. There's still questions around puberty blockers, and I, I've read lots of reports. I've read the medical analysis just this morning, and it's inconclusive in many cases because there's such little evidence. Uh, yes, there's evidence of, 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 of uh, bone density, but there's also evidence of improved mental health outcomes. So I think it's really, really important that we don't just pick and choose the negatives. We look at the holistic way of we can support children holistically, timely, and centrically to that individual child and their family to make sure they get the support they need. She's, she's quite explicit, Cass, isn't she, when she says the basis on which uh, these drugs were given to ch children under the age of 18 was very shaky at best. And she makes the point also that the adolescent brain is maturing until 25. Yeah, I'm, I'm horrified that uh, the profession that we trust, the medical professionals, have been woefully... Uh, prescribing or treating children in a way that isn't proven. And I, I support CAST by saying that what we need to do is get to the evidence. And this is not to prevent children transitioning. This is not to prevent children accessing hormones or puberty blockers where it's relevant, where it's timely and where necessary. This is about putting the evidence base and the processes in place to ensure that our young people, our children, get the best relevant care that they do, that they need, that is safe, Lucy. And, and proven, so I support that. Thanks, Joanne. Lucy, how do you explain the concept of transgenderism, if you like? How, how, how do you see it in an individual, particularly children? I think adults is a very different uh, proposition. But in children, how, how do you explain it? What is it a reaction to? Is it natural? No, it's not natural. It's it's as as is, is expressed in the cash report, and as as we've seen um, uh, over 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 the last few years, it's been a massive social contagion and a huge rise, especially in uh, adolescent girls who are identifying um, as as the opposite sex. 
And uh, Hilary Cass pointed out that, that a lot of this um, is, is down to contagion on social media. Obviously, a lot of children have been exposed to porn, which has affected the way that they see themselves, and especially young girls who don't want to be women because they, they see the, the, the awful things that happen in porn and they think that that's something that's expected of them. But there's also a lot of activism. There's a lot of um, parents who actually have their own issues and are transitioning children. And unfortunately, there are a lot of activist teachers and external groups who are going in and teaching a relationship in sex education in school and introducing this idea that you can be born in the wrong body. Nobody's born in the wrong body. And we need to stop this concept from being taught in school because this is a creating a pathway into, into gender dysphoria, which is unnecessary. Um, and it isn't safe and it is never necessary for children to transition. Well, Joanne, let, can you answer? That's quite a specific um, rebuttal, uh, saying that people are not born into the wrong body. Can you answer you, what is your response to that question Bev asked and specifically um, uh, what Lucy said just there? Uh, I'm not going to get into a debate around born in the wrong body, not born in the wrong body. For me, my, my brain sees me, myself, my identity as female. Whether I'm born in the wrong body, whether my brain is, is neurodiverse in some way, I can't explain it. All I know is it, it kind of resonates with me. And I think the, the key challenge here is that transgender people are seen as broken, they're seen as a fetish. Mm. Um, yeah, just looking at the Twitter comments, I, I'll get them after this uh, interview, we'll see that people are uh, accusing me of being a paedophile, uh, harmful to children. Joseph Mengele, I think, was quoted this yesterday. Yeah. So this is the narrative that trans people are facing. And so what we're doing is we're re imprinting that onto children. We look at the world of sport. And most sporting bodies say you cannot take part in their sport if you go through male or female puberty, mostly male puberty. Therefore, denying children, young people, the option to halt puberty, to allow them to uh, get into sport in their adult life, we're, we're failing people. So, yeah, I, I think there is an issue here where we're demonizing trans people. It's wrong. The same narrative we're applying to people who are gay, People who are black going back many, many years. But we're creating this us and them. But Cassie's report, Cassie's concern is that people, children who are too young are being lured into this world. I'm concerned yes. that young children aren't getting the support they need with their families to make balanced decisions for their lives. There are many, many children who have successfully and continue to successfully live their lives with a trans identity that have not had regret. Yes, I accept there are some people where it's not right for them. And I think every every step and care should be taken to ensure that it is the right step for whatever age you are to make sure you understand the full implications of the, of the choices you're making. Okay, you not mm. to, to start with a not to start with an opinion that you're wrong. To start with this, start with a let's talk, let's discuss this and let's let's balance out what is right for you as an individual. Lucy, how do you respond to the um, speculation that we will look back on this debate as we now look back on the gay debate and say, well, obviously it was wrong at the time, of course people are born gay, that there might be a time we look back and say, well, of course some people are born to a different gender to that which their physiology would suggest they are not. But I, I just think that that's wrong. People are not born in the wrong body. And I, I, unfortunately, that the way that this has gone over the last few years, activists have Lord, have basically trapped onto this and, and are encouraging children, whatever whatever their motivation is behind that, you know, that, that is up for debate. Um, certainly, I think that Big Pharma have got um, an interest in this because if, if you get a child onto puberty blockers and then onto cross-sex hormones, you've got a medical patient for life. So they're going to be making millions of pounds out, out of this indus industry of telling children that they're born in the wrong body and other people may have more um, unfortunate um, motivations for wanting to to, to to get children trapped into into this uh, into this lifestyle and um, but that's 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 a, that's another story but it basically i think that we will look back on this as a medical scandal that we have that we have failed children because we are lying to children okay um, activists and teachers are lying to children saying that it's possible to change sex and, and it isn't go on joanne so just respond to the accusation that pharma gets individual humans on a <sighs> subscription model of drugs for the rest of their lives really Really? I mean, the NHS doesn't subscribe to that. You know, we're, we're not getting money out of, out of people to, to fund drug companies. This, this is more than that. I think, I think it's very disingenuous to say that this is big pharma trying to take over the world. In America, it's, it's, it's huge. 
In America, it is the yeah. growing. In America, it is the it is. biggest area of, of medicine now. The, the, it's growing bigger than any other race. America, in terms of America is only one territory in the world. There are many other territories, you know, Australia, New Zealand, all across Europe, the rest of the world, have a different farmer model. And there are still trans people, there are still young, young people identifying as non-binary or transgender. I, I certainly don't see pharma influencing anybody. This is not something an addiction, this is not a drug. Validating a child is not, is not indoctrinating them. You know, there, are, there are equal pressures. You know, the CAS, CAS report quite clearly said there's toxic debate on both sides. There is a toxic debate on both sides. And what we need to do is have a more centrist conversation can, with look, evidence. Can I just jump, that, that, can I just jump in there and say, do you think um, by saying that people aren't born into the wrong body, that adds to the toxicity around the debate? Well, many of the people, young people today identify as non-binary. And the fundamental identity around non-binary is about gender. It's not about body. It's not about physique. It's about their, their identity of who they are. So maybe this was a very 1970s, 1980s model of being trans. Was It was your body that was at fault. I think we're more contemporary now. We understand it's actually more about brain development, how we see ourselves, yeah, the role of gender, mm. the social construct of gender, if you like, our role in society. Mm. It's not just about what we've got between our legs or on our chest anymore. People okay. are far more uh, discerning around uh, avoiding the term transsexual because that brings this sexual element into it. Yeah. I certainly don't feel sex is, is an issue or my body is an issue. It's about who I am and how I'm treated and how I interact with society. Go on, Lucy. Um, just, just have the final word on that, because I think we can distinguish between individuals who should always be treated with kindness and compassion and consideration and what we might describe as the trans activists' ideology, part of which inspires this very toxic debate. Yeah, well, of, of course, all individual children, we're talking about children here, need to be treated with, with, with care and compassion and with kindness. However, it's not kind to lie to children. If a child comes out and says that they're questioning their, their, their gender identity, they need to be told the truth. They need to be told that it isn't possible to change sex. And in terms of, of gender, if we're talking about gender um, stereotyping, the transgender ideology is profoundly regressive because girl have to identify as non-binary in order to do what she wants to do. A girl can have short hair, a, a girl can dress how she likes, a girl can play football. It doesn't mean that she's non-binary, it doesn't mean that she's a boy. Equally for boys, if they're more feminine, um, it doesn't mean that they're girls just because they're, 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 they're not particularly masculine presenting. We, we need to get away from these stereotypes because this is regressive and this is putting children into boxes to say, if you're a girl, you have to be like this, you have to like pink, you have to be people looking at the porn aspect of it that Cass talks about, that they have to look like porn stars with heavy makeup and, and um, false eyelashes. A lot of girls don't want to look like that, but just because they don't want to look like that, it doesn't mean they're non-binary. I think we need to stop lying to children. We need to get, get back to reality. And the kind thing would be to say, no, you're not. A, if a girl says, I'm a boy, say, no, you're not. You are a girl. But you can be, you can have infinite number of personalities. I think we've forgotten about personality. And it all about gender and identity politics and we should not be having identity politics when it surrounds children we need to be looking at safeguarding and bringing it back to safeguarding okay well listen thank you both really interesting to be really interesting and hopefully not toxic and we appreciate uh, your you. input this morning that was joanne lockwood the founder of see change happen and lucy marsh from the family education trust Up next.